Hello, what's up guys? Welcome to tonight's, to this evening's live streaming where we're going to be talking about live streaming. <laughs> so in my previous live streaming where I was giving 10 side hustles or 10 ways you can make money through videography, that live you got, you, you have to go and watch it. I shared a lot of information. A lot of people were asking to say, uh, show us how you do live streaming. Uh, we, we also want to know live streaming, how you do live streaming because your live streaming is really good. I think so. I don't know. Uh, I don't really think it's that good, but <laughs> if you guys say it's good, thank you so much. And live streaming is one of the uh, business ideas that I give, and this is one of the ways through which I make money as a videographer. I have done a lot of live streaming. Let me just show you. I have done a lot of live streaming for the Ministry of Education. I've done live streaming at the city of Johannesburg Council Chamber. I've done live streaming just for so many people and so many pastors and so many churches. And uh, live streaming is one of the ways you can quickly generate money as a side hustle or as a full-time career, as a full-time videographer who just specializes in live streaming. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. So I'm going to talk about what kind of cameras you need for live streaming, uh, what kind of everything that you need for live streaming and how to set them up, what uh, settings I use myself, make sure my live streamings are always perfect. We're going to go through the sound, uh, what kind of sound and why and stuff like that. So we're going to discuss a little bit about live streaming. And um, if I don't finish, obviously, we're going to finish at the workshops that are coming. And those workshops, guys, make sure you reserve your spot. If you are interested in making money as a videographer or in mastering videography and the editing. All right. So one of the comments that were consistent in my last live streaming was um, someone requested actually that I should show you a little bit of my behind the scenes, like uh, a more like a studio tour uh, of how I set up my live streaming. So yeah, I think as people are joining, let me do that. Uh, let me show you a little bit of behind the scenes of how I set up my live streams in this room. All right. So um, I'm going to show you how I have set up my cameras, my sound, and the computers I'm using, the capture cards I'm using, as well as uh, the software. And um, yeah, and then we're going to get into today's topic. Ooh, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already getting thirsty. <clears throat> All right, so in order for you to see exactly how I have set up my studio, I'm going to connect one more camera. Mm, I have uh, uh, my live streamings actually depends how I set up my live streams depends on what I'm live streaming that day. Okay, sometimes I'm just here to talk about uh, videography in general. I don't need to switch cameras, just maybe one camera. Sometimes I can set two cameras if there is something that I need to show to the viewers and stuff like that. Sometimes I can set three cameras and rare moments like today where I set four cameras because I want to like show different angles of my studio and show you what I'm actually using and why I'm using it and how I have set it up. So for you to see exactly how those things happen, uh, let me just go and set up this camera so that it can show a sort of like behind the scenes. Right now you see uh, the picture is perfect, the background, everything is good. So let me just connect this camera so that you can see just how messy it is inside here. <laughs> All right, guys, so make sure you don't forget to share the videos, guys. I don't know why videographers don't like to share videos. I'm just going to set up here, connect to the HDMI, and uh, boom, the camera is on now. Please share the video, share the video. Don't get lazy, share the video. All right, so I'm back. I'm back now. Okay, there's a microphone here, actually. All right, so this is how it looks like. This is what I want you to see. But uh, if I can switch on to that camera over there, you can see now that there's uh, quite a lot of stuff going on in this studio. When you enter, you, you, you think like it's a shop or something because everything is just everywhere. Let's get started. In this setup today, I have three cameras. I have this camera over here. This is a camera if maybe I want to do like a, a really tight side angle, second angle of myself, I use this camera. Of course, we have this as a main camera, camera number two. And then we have uh, another camera at the back there. If 
I'm showing, if I'm, that day I'm live streaming and I want you to see what I'm doing, that's the camera that I use at the back there. So it faces this side. I'm going to show you now what angles I'm able to get with that camera. So you guys, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section. I'll be able to see all those comments. All right. So um, let me start with um, the main camera and show you how I have set up everything there. Right, so I'm going to be moving that camera around so that I can show you exactly what is going on. Cool. All right. In fact, what I'm also going to do is to turn this angle, this camera, so that it can look that side where I'm filming. I want you to see the main camera. So I'm just going to turn it to that side so that it can show you the side view of the camera. And then I'm also going to turn this camera and show you the front side of the main camera so that at least you can see uh, both angles. So I'm going to pick my behind the scene camera now so that I can show myself. All right, so this is the main camera. The body of the camera is the Lumix GH5, and uh, I'm using the lens that is here is the Samyang T 1.5. So I have paired it with the Vetrox Speed Booster 0.71, which makes the T to come to almost 0.9. So it's a very fast setup, it's a very fast lens. And uh, this is the main camera situation. This is where I have attached my sound, and uh, this is where. Uh, sometimes if I have uh, like a lot of stuff that I need to memorize, like maybe I'm doing computer specs or I'm giving so much data that I cannot memorize in my head, this is actually a teleprompter, right? This is actually a teleprompter, so I can just put my iPad here. And this is the iPad that I normally use. I can just put uh, an iPad here with all that information and it will reflect here and it's good that way. So this is actually a teleprompter. And uh, this is where I have hooked my sound. And uh, if uh, I, w I never wanted to discuss about sound now, but since we are already on the main camera, let me just talk about sound. So I have a two sound system situation going on here. The first one is this one on top. So this is a hybrid wireless sound system. It's the one that I'm using right now. I just don't know if you can see. This is the one that I'm using. The sound that you are hearing right now, it is coming from this uh, hybrid microphone. All right, so why am I using this one is because I am moving around and the microphone is hooked. You know, I don't like lapel microphones. I have a lot of lapel microphones. Maybe I'll show you some of them when I start to talk about live streaming, but I like this one better. Okay, so this is a hybrid uh, wireless transmitter sound si situation and uh, if I can turn this camera this side I have a uh, audio deck here this audio deck goes with uh, this microphone this shotgun microphone that we are seeing here uh, Sennheiser MKE 600 it's a very powerful microphone so when I'm doing uh, when I'm recording videos like tutorials I like to use this microphone because I am stationary, and overall it has got a better sound quality more than uh, this situation that I'm using right now. So that is the sound situation. So this is just the audio deck for the, the audio deck for the Lumix GH5. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So nothing much. This is just the Lumix GH5, and this is the main camera. So the camera that is taking this shot right now. Uh, let me just show you all right so over here we have uh, another camera this is the one that i use to you know take uh, another shot of myself it doesn't really work too much but it's always good that it is there because sometimes it might work and uh yeah so it's a lumix gh5 and the lens that is here it is uh let me just uh, it's a 50 millimeter f2. It's a vintage lens, the Nikon vintage lens. It's a very nice lens. So 
this is the one that takes this angle on this side. All right, uh, what else? Let me show you. So over here we have uh, another camera. This is the third camera. And I use this camera to sort of show myself uh, behind the scene of myself if I'm explaining something on the controlling desk there, which I'm going to show you in a moment. This is the camera that I use. But uh, on this camera, I have a rock known 85 millimeter because it is just really for specific. If I want to show something to the camera from behind, this is the camera I use. So it's a rock known T1.5. It's also a very fast lens. The camera body, which is here, the Lumix uh, GH4. Oh, I thought it's a GH5. <laughs> okay, so it's a GH4. It has got a nice follow focus ring, very smooth. So you just set the focus point and you leave it. So now let me just turn it on the desk so that you can see. Okay, so now let me show you my controlling desk. So let me just move the camera, uh, the behind the scene camera so that you can see properly. All right, now this is the control center. Right, so if I can switch to camera number two, you can see what's happening on this uh, desk. And uh, this is the iPad that I use to, you know, like if I have to read comments on Facebook, uh, you guys, when you start sending comments, this iPad will be here just like this so that I can see the comments. But most of the time, I just like to put it closed just like this. And uh, this is a small computer which can turn into an iPad, uh, which I'm using to control uh, the live stream. Right, you can see there's vMix here. vMix is the software that I'm using for live streaming, but this is not the computer which is live streaming. This one is using, it's just monitoring the computer that I'm using for live streaming because I can actually detach this iPad like this and I can move around inside the studio just to, just doing live streaming, you know? So uh, if I'm switching cameras, I can even switch cameras from here just click the cameras will switch let's say this one there, that's all so I can safely move around and switch cameras even if I was in America I can live stream while I'm in Africa I can I can hold a live stream that is happening in Africa but I'm in America because of this kind of setup so I'm gonna show you in a moment the computer that I'm using for live streaming but this is where I control everything so this is the Atem Mini Pro. This is where all my cameras are connected. Uh, there's camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four, and out. And uh, yeah, this is where I just switch off and I use the Atem Mini Pro every time I'm doing live streaming because it is that good. The lighting that I'm using. So these are really cheap soft boxes that I'm lighting, that I'm using to light myself. And uh, these are the soft boxes that I'm gonna give away at the workshops actually. So I don't need this. I have another really proper light inside there. And I was using this one to just, you know, I was creating a course. So I was really trying by all means to go with budget stuff. And I like them actually. They've been here for some time now. I love them. I love them a lot. So these are the lighting situation that I'm using. Uh, just these two soft boxes. If they use fluorescent lights, normal fluorescent lights that you can get in the, in the shop. And I have a backlight here. Let me just turn the camera there so that you can see the backlight. Uh, there it is. So that is the backlight. The backlight. It is RGB as well. You can change colors uh, using this remote. Using this remote, you can change the colors of this backlight. You can change red, green, blue, change to light blue, which I normally use. And this remote, this whole remote, is the one that can control all the lighting that is in here. So if I can turn the camera to this side, if I can turn the camera to this side, all those RGB lights can be controlled with just this remote. All right, I can control all the colors of this RGB light with just 
this remote, which is cool because just this remote alone, I can control everything inside this studio. All the light inside this studio, they are actually RGB lights. And uh, lastly, before I switch over to the main computer that I always use for live streaming, we have got uh, this guy over here. This is the monitor which is connected to the Atel Mini where I can see all my cameras, where I can switch my cameras. It's a black magic monitor, 5.5 inch, very handy. And uh, sometimes actually I can record. The good part is it can also be powered so I don't have to worry about the batteries even though it can take uh, some batteries. But this is really a good monitor that I've been using for some time now. And this is the one that I use whenever I am trying to do live streaming. So let me go to the computers over there so that I can show you uh, what kind of computer am I using to my main streaming desk that I'm controlling remotely. All right. All right, so to sum it up with this little tour, this is the desk where I normally, this is a computer which I'm using to live stream actually. So this is where vMix is installed and everything, all the programs, they're installed here and it is being controlled remotely by the iPad there. So I'll just set up everything here and then use the iPad to control it. The computer I'm using is not really that heavy. It's not a beginner's computer. At the same time, it's not like a Uber too specced up, you know. It is just a Core i7 ninth generation. It has got a graphics card of 8 GB. It also has a, oh, the processor, it has got a 12 cores. It has got a processor 3.4 GB. It's really super fast though. It has got a RAM of 64 GB. So this is where I normally edit actually after the live streaming and stuff. This is where I normally edit and this is the desk that you have been seeing in the background every time I'm doing the videos. All right, so the computer, I'm just gonna take another angle. Uh, I can't show you live, come on. Uh, let, me, let me just set up one camera. Let me just set up one camera so that you can see that computer real quickly. So I'm gonna switch on this camera over here. Uh, I'm going to take it down so that you can see where the computer is. That's the computer there. That's the computer. So that's where everything is connected, actually. Uh, let me even just close it so that you can see it properly. It's HP Omen. Boom, just like that. It's HP Omen. Really nice computer, guys. And uh, yeah, so... Let me go back to the desk so that we can continue with the live streaming of today. <laughs> I never thought it was going to take this time, guys. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, let me know if sound and everything is still fine. And uh, let's continue with our live streaming, guys. Right, this is how it looks like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is how it looks like uh, behind the scenes. But if I can cut to this camera over here, this is how it looks like straight inside the camera. So if you have any questions, guys, just let me know. Otherwise, this is the simple setup that I'm using in my studio. If there's something that you'd like to find out more about, whether you want, oh, what kind of cameras, what kind of capture cards, if you want to know more about anything that I just showed you, just let me know in the comment section. And that's what we're going to start looking at right now. So uh, let me now go through your comments guys and, uh, yeah so this is the last time you're seeing that camera I'm gonna take it off completely so that you can focus on me right instead of focusing on everything that is happening here <laughs> all right so let's go through your comments just let me know and please don't forget to share the video right all right so going through your comments here I even saw someone texting me to say how are you switching cameras? Sometimes you're not even there, but cameras are switching. What, one thing that I didn't tell you again is I can control the live stream using my phone. In fact, let me just cut to that camera over there so that you can see. You can see I can switch between cameras just using my phone uh, remotely. 
you know, this is how advanced the thing. Uh, I can switch between cameras. I can put cameras. I can, you know, I can do all this sort of stuff with my phone. So you can connect your phone to the vMix and control it. This is how I was able to actually live stream for Crown Gospel Awards during lockdown. So I was controlling the live stream using my phone, and I was making a lot of money from that. All right, so there's so much stuff that you can learn. Stick with me and you are safe because so much stuff, so much. So <clears throat> I can see uh, how many cameras are you using for this live stream, sir? I was using, I'm using four cameras that are connected right now. Those are the four cameras that I'm using. And uh, I connected them deliberately like that because I wanted to show you some of the stuff that uh, I'm using inside this studio. Someone requested during our last live. And uh, let me just go through the people from the top. I can see Francis Bobs is watching from Zambia. Uh, Phineas is always the first one to comment. Nice. Thank you for joining us. You can see uh, Roaring Eagle, Kiv is watching as well. Andre says, hey, Mr. San Pedro. Hey, Andre, thanks for joining us. Fidel is watching from Centurion, Adobe Studio. Thank you so much, Kiv. I can see Daphne uh, all, the, all the way from Canada. Totally, this guy is so talented. Thank you, Daphne. <laughs> uh, Mary Zambunu says, nice. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Elisha also is joining, following, sir. Thank you so much for joining, Mr. Elisha. And um, Mr. Mike M., Major Michael. Hi, Pedro. I would like to know who you are switching the ATM connected cameras. I'm using a smartphone. Just gave to one of my guys here to help me switch the cameras as I'm moving towards. So they are out of the studio, but they can see the whole stream. And I've already walked them through what I was going to do today. And they're busy switching, just using a remote, uh, switching them wirelessly. Okay. Demosiano uh, says, today I can see a bottle of liquid. It's even finished. <laughs> the sound is good. That's Mr. Elisha. Picture on point. Thank you so much, Mr. Elisha. How many cameras are you using? Uh, four cameras. Uh, learning from you is so nice. Love the way you're explaining everything. Thank you so much, Mr. S. Weed. Mm, this is new. Yeah, uh, lots of stuff. Uh, watching from Canada. Daphne, thank you so much for joining us from Canada. Thank you so much. And uh, how do you color grade during live stream? Uh, <laughs> I don't really color grade videos unless I have to, but the program that I'm using, Laya Vmix, has got a way that you can color grade your videos. So whatever that you are seeing right now, it is not color graded. It is just the way I set my camera up. It's just the way I set my lighting so that it already looks good from the camera because we don't have that time to color grade, do we? <laughs> so, yeah, it just looks straight out of the camera. Okay, and these are some of the stuff that I teach uh, on my online film classes. Uh, you know, the things that I teach in these online classes, they really look simple, right? But those are the same things that really make a huge difference. So please do, um, do make sure you... You check out those items. All right. Uh, how do you balance the colors? Are you use the same cameras? Yes. Uh, if you watch this video from the beginning, all the cameras that are here, the Lumix GH5. I have uh, Lumix GH5, GH5, GH4, Lumix GH2 behind the scenes. So all of them, they've got the same color tone, same picture style. But even if I was using different cameras, it's just easy in... Uh, vmix to just color grade or to do color correction so that the cameras look okay all right camilla my sister says keep up with the good work thank you so much for joining and uh who is this one uh we are going to benefit a lot from this teaching thank you so much mr pedro 
Thank you so much, Mr. Harold Austin. Thank you. Thank you. Watching from Zambia, that's good. I love it. All right, so let's get into today's program officially. So we are talking about live streaming and uh, live streaming. Maybe you, you, you just think of live streaming as in live streaming church programs or church organizations, but live streaming is huge, you guys. It's huge. There are so much people who make a lot of money through live streaming only games, you know, just on their computer with a webcam, live streaming games. People make a lot of money for, from that. There are people who are live streaming for churches, you know, lots of money. I've been the candidate of, you know, making a lot of money even today. There's a church where I live stream. How much do they pay me? $700 per Sunday. Per Sunday, you know. So there isn't a time when, when, when I'm never booked for church live streaming. There are other churches, small churches, they pay maybe $200 per Sunday. Other churches, maybe $300 per Sunday. But I do live streaming for church programs. So that is another form of live streaming. There's also another live streaming that I just spoke about where you live stream for corporate organization right now. I also have another live streaming that I do at, um, on the city of Johannesburg, right here in South Africa, city, uh, city of Johannesburg, council chamber. I do those. It's another form of income. So live streaming is wide. So it, it really depends what kind of live streaming. Suppose you want to get into live streaming. What kind of live streaming do you want to start with? And hopefully I'm going to give you some, you know, really useful advice in terms of what equipment you get and stuff like that for any kind of live streaming that you are hoping to do. All right, Okaka, nice one. Thank you so much. Just Violet says, learning from you has been the best. Thank you so much, Mr. Wise. Thank you so much, Mr. Just. All right, so uh, perhaps where we should start from, even before I begin to show you how to do professional live streaming, as you have already seen, maybe it has already given you ideas, some of you who started earlier. Uh, before we begin is, what sort of live streaming do you want to start doing, right? Is it normal live streaming like the way I'm doing? Maybe you are going for, you know, um, men of God after service, doing their live streaming, church programs, you know, just really small live streamings like this. Uh, what sort of live streaming do you want to get to? So you have to do, um, you have to do a research about that in terms of where uh, you can do all of them, right? But uh, Obviously, maybe where you are, there isn't so much people who are doing live streaming for their church. Maybe you can do uh, game live streaming and stuff like that. So I'm going to give you guidance in terms of which equipment to get for each sort of setup of live streaming. So how does live streaming operate? Right? All of us now, we already know how live streaming operates, obviously. Live streaming is, I'm talking right here and you're watching there in real time. So live streaming is the process through which video is taken from uh, the, the person who is talking, from the presenter to the viewer in real time. As I'm speaking, so you are hearing me in real time, we are able to interact. You know, you're asking a question, I'm looking at the question and I'm able to answer. So that is live streaming. So basically how it operates, how it works is you connect the sound either to the computer or to the camera, and then the camera connects to a sound card. Right, uh, this guy over here, right, to the sound card. Or oh, better yet, I can just switch cameras. Yeah, so this is the sound card. <laughs> so the camera connects to the sound card. Uh, let me just look at that one here. Yeah, cool. The camera connects to the sound card, and uh, the sound card connects to the computer. And on the computer, there is a streaming software uh, like vMix. You can use uh, web-based softwares like StreamYards. You can use uh, open source softwares like open broad, uh, OBS. You know? So that software is the one that you push your live streaming now to either Facebook, YouTube. Right now, I'm live on both YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So that is the process through which uh, live streaming happens. So what do you need for live streaming? You need a camera, of course, a camera number one, and then you need some form of sound, very important for live streaming, and then you're gonna need some sort of uh, lighting, very important as well for live streaming, then you're gonna need a computer, 
computer is also very important for professional live streaming. There's those live streaming that you can go live with your phone like this. Good, but not professional, because if I want to show you something here, you, it's difficult. But professional, like the way I'm doing live streaming, now I'm able to switch between cameras, you know, so that you can see many angles. You, if I want to show something, you can always see. This is professional live streaming. If I wanted to include titles and stuff like that, you can always do that on a professional live streaming. So that is the advantage of professional live streaming. If you are approaching people to say, I want to live stream for you, and you show them this kind of setup, they're gonna, there's always high chances for them to say, yes, I want you to come and do live streaming. But if you approach them to say, I'm going to be live streaming with a phone, uh, they might say, there's a lot of chances that they may say no. <laughs> so that is professional live streaming. So what do you need? Uh, I've already gone through that. And then uh, you're also going to need some form of software, you know. So most of people, if you are really beginning, you are not really so much familiar with different softwares, which is simple. In my class for live streaming, which is launching next, next month on the 10th, there's a class for live streaming. This class is big, guys. It's really big. <laughs> so it's launching finally on the 10th of March next month. So... I, I go through each and every software for live streaming like vMix. I show you everything about vMix. OBS, I show you everything about OBS. And then StreamYard, I show you everything about StreamYard. So the choice will always be yours. At least you have where to choose from when you are doing live streaming. So you're always also going to need some form of a software. And then after this, some form of software, you need also to do the settings. Like uh, if you are, live, you are live streaming for Facebook, Oh, no, after software, you're also going to need some form of internet connection, right? So I have mentioned how many stuff now. You're going to need a camera, sound, lighting, computer, softwares, internet. Six items that you're going to need for live streaming. So what type, let, let me go back to the cameras now. What type of camera do you need for live streaming? So uh, when we started live streaming back in 2015, I think I'm one of those people who started really live, take live streaming from it's kind of a, it's kind of a fetus or embryo position because that's where it was starting to where it is now. Now live streaming has improved so much. So that time it was complicated because we were using analog cameras which were using AV cables instead of HDMI. So at this moment I wouldn't give you an advice to look for those cameras that have got um, that are still using audiovisual cables because it's sort of like an outdated, uh, you know, technology. So if you want to live stream now, let's go with HDMI. So what kind of camera do you need for live streaming? Obviously, you're going to need a camera which has got an HDMI. And not just HDMI, but clean HDMI. What I mean by clean HDMI is when you connect your HDMI cable to your computer, it should not show menu uh, screen information like battery information, cards, and stuff like that. So any camera that has got clean HDMI, it can do live streaming. And it doesn't really matter what sort of a camera, whether it's a camcorder like uh, there is uh, this camcorder here. There is this camcorder that I was using at some point for live streaming. You know, it can do professional live streaming because it has got HDMI, it has got audio jack, it has got all those kind of stuff. You know, so you don't really need like a professional, professional camera, even a smallest camera that can do. And you will not even believe, like I've been using that sort of camcorders even on church programs, you know, like there are so many churches that I went to do live stream with that same camcorder. All right, so if you are live streaming, let's say it's a small church program, you can use really small camcorders like uh, Canon Legria, like the one that I just showed you now. Uh, you can use, as long as it just has a clean HDMI. And uh, for programs, because camcorders actually, they, 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 don't, they last long when it comes to battery and there is no hassle for camera, uh, for lenses and stuff like that. Most camcorders, they come with a lens attached. Now for live streaming, like the ones that I'm doing right now, you need a camera like a DSLR camera, you know, for, I love DSLR, even camcorders can work, yes, here, but I love DSLR because they have got uh, the ability to exchange the lenses 
as well as the picture quality is really nice. You know, it looks really nice online. No wonder people say, oh, your, your videos look nice because I'm using um, DSLR cameras to do live streaming. So if you're going to do really big programs like the ones I do at uh, Johannesburg Council Chamber or like really big services whereby they take a lot of time, I'd really recommend you use camcorders like, um, let's see if I have something here that I can show you. Camcorders like the Z5, the Z7, such kind of cameras. So it depends really what kind of uh, live streaming you are planning to do, but the cheapest, cheapest uh, camcorder, it can still work. All right. And then we come to the next item, which is capture card, right? Capture card is a device that takes the feed from your camera through the capture card to the computer because your computer on its own, it cannot detect a camera that is attached, right? So with a capture card, it takes that video, processes it in a, in a codec which the computer can recognize it and uh, you can use it now to send to many different platforms. So what are uh, capture cards? It's this Atom Mini. So this is a video card. This one is a video card and the switcher. I can switch between cameras. If I press camera number one, I can switch to that one. I can switch to this one. I can also switch to other cameras that I have now disconnected. Right, so you need a capture card. And what kind of capture card do you need? It also depends with what kind of live streaming you are doing. So if you're doing a live streaming whereby you just need one camera, you can use really simple capture cards like uh, these capture cards which I started with. Uh, this uh, HDMI video capture with loop. These are the capture cards that I normally use when I'm traveling where there's no electricity because these are just like, you know, plug and play. There isn't really so much hassle. Uh, you can take advantage of such kind of capture cards and they're not even expensive. And uh, if you really need something that is a little bit more advanced, there's l literally like different types of capture cards, really many of them, many of them. There is even this one, the intensity shutter. Is this one, the intensity shutter. This is the one that I started live streaming with. It's very easy to use as well. You just plug in the cable. Uh, here you just plug in the cable and then the other end goes to the computer. This is the intensity shutter. You can see it has got those AV cables which I was talking about because at that time we are also still using AV cables for live streaming. So there's different types of capture cards. There's Atel Minis now, Atel Mini Pro even. There's even Atel Mini e Extreme and stuff like that. So those, you need to have one of those capture cards. And then from there you need to have a uh, a computer, right, the computer, the specs and doesn't really have to be so big because um, mostly the software does the work. If you're going to use live streaming and OBS, uh, mostly the software does it a lot of work, but you're going to need a decent computer, a really good beginner computer with at least 8 GB of RAM or 12 GB of RAM, at least uh, 2.5 gigahertz of uh, the processor with the graphics card, at least 2 GB as well with some storage where you can be saving your live streaming. So you need a computer like that. And it doesn't have to be like i7, even i5, as long as it has got those kind of specs, you are good. And then you're going to need some form of sound. Sound is very important, guys, on live streaming and in videography in general. If you're doing a project which requires people to listen to what is being said in the, <laughs> in the video, you're going to need some really sort of good uh, microphones. So I normally use when, when, when we are live streaming and also it goes with the type of live streaming you are doing, of course. So if I'm live streaming for the church, obviously the best place to take sound is through their mixer. So I'll just get a, a cable from their mixer straight to my camera. And whenever you are doing live streaming, please, by all means, find a way to connect sound directly to the main camera to avoid the lip sync issues because sometimes when you connect sound straight from the mixer to the computer and then you try to you know match it in post with the picture there's always a really big latency and uh, syncing syncing it's usually a problem for most 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 scenarios so I always recommend that you use sound straight to the camera and then 
the camera together in the HDMI text directly to the capture card to the computer, then you're not going to have latency in sound. So invest in some good sound. So if I'm doing a live streaming for people at church, you know, it's a church live streaming, or for the Jobek City where I'm doing for an organization where there's a lot of people, obviously there's always a sound system in such circumstances. So you need to just get a sound from their mixer straight to your camera. But if I'm doing live streaming for programs like this before, I was using uh, lapel microphones, which I don't like a lot because I have to change batteries now and again for both receivers. But the system I'm using now, like I have shown you uh, at the beginning, I use this. Of course, it's a wireless microphone, so I have to just change batteries in one. But the other one is continuously plugged to electricity, so it prevents that hassle of changing batteries and stuff. So if you are doing live streaming where you are walking around and stuff like that, but lapel microphones are the best, you know, and there's a lot of cheaper options. When you come to the workshop, you're going to see all this stuff that I'm talking about from the cheapest to the most expensive one so that you can have a choice. And when I mean the cheapest, I don't mean mediocre, but cheapest that can do professional live streaming. So we start at the beginner professional. So you're going to see all this stuff that I'm talking about when you come to the workshop. All right. And then from uh, sound, some form of lighting as well. Okay. So if you want to live stream for the church, obviously they have got some form of lighting. And this one is a big problem, especially for small churches that don't really know so much about live streaming or organization that doesn't really know so much about live streaming. They might be having a meeting in a place whereby um, it's kind of dark. There's just home lights, not really too much light for the camera. And this is where I see Opa Loompa, uh, you know, live streams don't really come out nice. So if you're going to go into live streaming for organizations, live streaming for church programs, make sure you're also equipped with some form of uh, lighting. Right. So some of the lights that I use a lot, very bright, they use battery, are this these lights are really super good in many ways. They are by color, actually. You can change the colors, and they operate on batteries. And you have no idea how much they, they can stay on for continuously for two hours. So these are the lights that I would recommend if you are getting started. And they are so cheap, 1,500, this light. We are talking about roughly $100, this light. So I have... Ten of these lights and six of them I'm going to give them away at the workshops that are coming. So you need to have some form of lighting whenever you are doing uh, live streaming so that if you get into a church whereby people, they don't really have so much light, you can have some light for your camera so that your life is so appealing. All right. And um, internet, yes, you're going to need some sort of internet. Right now, I'm going to show you the settings if time will still allow. Right now, uh, all right, I'll get your questions very soon. So when it comes to the internet, right now, I'm going to show you the settings and the bitrate of the videos, how I send them to the internet. Because this is where, actually, I also see a lot of people struggling uh, in terms of sending their videos to the internet because uh, they, they they don't even do any settings. <laughs> so you find that you are sending your videos with high bitrate, you know, and uh, it is struggling now to play and the video is skipping. So with me, I'm live streaming now. If I can tell you the internet that I'm using, the maximum speed, the maximum upload speed is just 7 megabits per second. So what I do is I'm live streaming now with uh, 1.5 megabits per second because I'm live streaming both to... Facebook and YouTube. So 1.5 each, right? The more platforms I send this live stream to, the more bitrate uh, data it needs. So if I'm sending to two platforms, let's say like the way I'm doing Facebook and YouTube, I have to, there's always what we call a 50% uh, a fifty percent rule, right? So if like my maximum upload speed is 7 megabits per second at the moment, if I'm live streaming, I have to make sure that whatever I'm live streaming is under half of 7 megabits per second. So half is 3.5 megabits per second at the moment. 
So I'm live streaming at 1.5 megabits per second to each platform. So I'm, I'm using three megabits per second of my data. So in case something happens, like the data drops a little bit, it doesn't affect my live stream as long as people, they can still see it clearly. Right, so those are some of the settings that I'm gonna get into. And then what else, what else didn't I speak about? I think I've spoken about the equipment that you need and also the connection is very simple. You just connect your camera, you connect your sound to your camera, and then you connect your camera to the capture card, and then the capture card connects to the computer. And then on the computer, there is a software which you will use to send your videos to any platform, live streaming platform. So a software can be anything like uh, StreamYard, which doesn't even need you to download any software specifically in your computer. You can just, it is an online based platform that you can use to live stream. You can also use vmix the one that i'm using right now i th i think vmix is the best ever since i started live streaming and then obvious it's good vmix requires a lot of uh, hardware resources from your computer but obvious is very light on most computers you can it's very easy to live stream both of them can be used professionally to live stream and then you're also going to need internet of course and you have to know the internet speed of your computer or of the internet that you have so now, the next chapter is how do you connect all these things in terms of settings? Uh, let me know which softwares I should use to explain to you and what kind of questions you have uh, before we, we migrate to something else. Aubrey, um, HP Mola, a uh, nice one. From Soweto, Orlando East, I will learn more than you come to SA, yeah, uh, he's coming to the workshop. If you are in SA, we are having a videography workshop. I haven't even spoken about it. We are having a videography workshop on the 7th and 8th, which focuses on uh, creativity and uh, technical side of videography. It teaches about how to shoot proper and good videos, how to make videos really look good, regardless of what equipment you are using. And this is very important, and you just don't know um, what I teach at these workshops. You know, in Africa, uh, we, we don't really have so much budget in terms of cameras to use and stuff like that. So we are just taking advantage of whatever we have, you know. If it is a smartphone, whatever smartphone we are using, we have to take advantage. We have to learn some skills to take advantage of whatever we have to create a proper video. And this is what these workshops are focused on. It's really focused on the skill to equip you so that whatever camera you pick, you can create a good video. So we are having such workshop on the, 15, uh, on the 7th and 8th in Pretoria and also on the 14th and 15th in Copper Belt in Dollar as well as 21st and 22nd Cop uh, in Livingstone. So it's really workshops, really good workshops that will be held for two days on each uh, place. The first day we talk about technical and creativity in videography and then we talk about business side of videography where I'm going to also talk about live streaming from beginning to the end, as well as many others like how to create a good YouTube channel and create a revenue. You know, most filmmakers, you, I know that it's really hard for you to create a YouTube channel, get over 1,000 subscribers and start monetizing your channel. It's really difficult for mostly, in fact, almost all the beginner videographers that I've met, no one is monetized because people don't really like videography and uh, it's, it's not an industry that people like like uh, juicy news like trending news and stuff like that other youtube channel but as a filmmaker to create a youtube channel that you can really <laughs> it's tough but it's doable you know i had a channel before which has got over seven thousand subscribers now i abandoned it and i created a new channel in december just within this month, in the last 28 days, I've, able, I've been able to hit 1,400 subscribers, over 1,400 subscribers, and over 6,000 uh, watch hour views. So now I'm even able to monetize. So such kind of stuff is what I'm going to share at the workshop. Like, there are so many stuff that you need to know when you're creating a YouTube channel, what kind of content and how you post your content and stuff like that, all such kind of stuff. So that will be held on the second day where we shall talk about almost 20 different ways you can make money through videography. The other ones, I have already hinted about them in my last live stream. The other ones we're gonna share at the workshop. Don't really, you don't have to miss 
I don't have a lot of money, so the information you are sharing is helping me too. Thank you so much, Daphne. Thank you so much. <laughs> Apart from mini atom, what other mode can I use to connect multiple cameras, or is it a must of having an atom mini? All right, so when it comes to capture card, there's different models and different types, different manufacturers. And uh, like I said, it depends what kind of live streaming you are using. So in your case, if you're going to use multiple cameras, like four cameras, right, you can get any other capture card that can input four cameras. But when I was starting, I didn't have also money to buy the Atom Mini. So what I was doing is I was buying these small capture cards that I've shown you already. Uh, let me just show you again, right? Let me just show you again. I don't know where it has disappeared to that video. All right, here it is. So when I started, I was using these capture cards. What I was doing is if I have to connect four cameras, I'll connect four of them because these capture cards, they are cheap. Four of them, that time I was buying them. Uh, when they were coming in, when they were coming out, they were expensive, but now they are cheap. You can find one for 300 kwacha or 300 rand or that is how much? $15 or $20, you can get this capture card. And it's really good. It's very good. These are the capture cards that I was using in the beginning. So if you want to connect to four, you can even see here I have two of them because I was connecting two cameras per live stream. But uh, if you want to connect to four, you can just get those four capture cards and connect them to the computer and connect your cameras like that and import them one by one to the streaming software that you are using and you are good. But that is a lot of hassle because your computer will need to have a lot of ports where you can plug in all this kind of stuff. <laughs> but they are doable. I did it and it worked. Okay, very impressive. Wow. Uh, this is Matema Boshe. Very impressive. Wow. That is amazing. You are teaching me. Thanks. All right, guys. I don't really like my live streams to be so much long these days. So today we have looked at the stuff that you need for live streaming. And uh, tomorrow I'll be live again and we'll be looking at the connections and settings that you need to do for live streaming for it to go the way it is going right now. And uh, the other day, we're going to look at the business side of uh, live streaming, where you get clients for live streaming, how you, you go about your daily life about live streaming. So today, let's end it here so that I don't keep a lot of people watching for a long time. Uh, electricity as well is going to be going out right now. We're having electricity problem in South Africa. There's lots of load shedding. And uh, yeah, so Mr. Elisha <laughs> says everything seems new. Uh, thank you so much. I can't stop learning. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Elisha. Though I have come late, keep up the good work. That is Andrew. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. You can just rewatch the video. Uh, everything is there. It will, I'm not deleting it. And um, yeah, thank you so much for everyone who joined the live. If you have any questions before I go, I would like to answer some of those questions, maybe for five minutes before I switch off the live stream. But tomorrow is going to be amazing. We're going to look at the camera settings, uh, the software settings, and how you push your live streaming to different mod, uh, platforms and the settings that I use to make sure that my live streaming aren't really uh, not, not so pleasant like other live streaming whereby the sound will cut, uh, the lighting is not good. No, those are stuff we're going to look at. Uh, Mr. Victor says, Ritumezi, Ritumezi also. Mr. Victor, Niruna Ritumezi, Sha, Mupumu Yande, Erokabunana Kamuso. I think we don't have questions. Some, some comments, they delay to come. So let me just keep a little bit waiting. Which streaming software do you recommend? I recommend vMix, but it requires a little bit of your computer's hardware resources. So the, the first software that I recommend, it's vMix. And uh, if you are not really this person who has a computer, you can use StreamYard. StreamYard is a really nice software for live streaming. It's an online platform which works like vMix as well. You can do all mixing and stuff like that, but it happens online. So the only downside of it is since it's happening online, it will also require 
so much data from your site. And then the other one that is so friendly, so it doesn't really need a really big computer, is OBS. So those three softwares I recommend, but the first one that I really recommend is vMix. Though vMix expires after two months, you can, I'll teach you something how you can use vMix forever without even paying for it. But I'll review such kind of stuff at the workshop. I don't want vMix to attack this <laughs> live stream and <laughs> hopefully take it away. So yeah. <laughs> All right, so get some time to talk about uh, editing. Don't worry, I got you covered. We're gonna start with uh, editing uh, very soon. In fact, maybe tomorrow we can skip live streaming and start editing. It all depends to you guys. But uh, yeah, tomorrow I just want to finish off with live streaming because people have been asking a lot about live streaming, but uh, editing, we're gonna start with it as well. All right. All right, guys, so for those who are still hooked, please, share the video as I go out. I'll see you tomorrow again, maybe same time, but I'll announce again, I'll send a, a poster because electricity, load shedding, so I have to always check the schedule for electricity so that it doesn't black out. Even planning how to shoot a song, please. All right, I'm gonna talk about all this stuff that you are asking, né? how to plan to shoot. <laughs> I have an online course about music videos that takes you from the beginning. What camera you need, what settings, what angles, what uh, uh, movements, how to direct a music video. All those kind of stuff, I've already taught them in a course that cost around less than 500, less than 500, but it's an in-depth course. But I'm gonna hopefully talk about it also on live. It depends when we're gonna do that. Do you bond? Do you bond your internet when live streaming? Uh, Mr. Victor, I think uh, try to put it in simpler terms. I don't know exactly what bonding you mean, but uh, I just I just look at the the speed of the internet. I don't do anything when it comes to. When I'm, whenever I'm doing live streaming, I don't do anything when it comes to lighting. What I only check, yeah, when it comes to the internet, what I only check before I live stream is to check the speed of my internet. If my internet, the speed is 10 megabits per second, then I'll set my live stream at five megabits per second to give me a 50% row so that in case the speed drops, at least I'm still safe. So I don't know exactly what you mean. I just try to put it in simpler terms. Tomorrow at what time will you be live on Facebook? I'll let you know, I'll let you know, I'll send a poster, like I said, uh, I have to check the schedule for tomorrow's blackout. Otherwise, thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's a lovely time, it's a lovely day. Have, enjoy your evening further. I don't know what time it is in Canada. Enjoy your day further. Thank you so much for joining me. Catch you next tomorrow. I'll post everything and uh, those who intend to register for the workshops, people that have started re reserving their spots, so if you still have like, ah, maybe I need to check out these workshops, please do s reserve your spot for 250, then you can be paying until you are done. Uh, you don't have to pay all of it. The closing dates for South Africa is on the 30th March, and also for Zambia is on the 8th April. Those are the closing dates. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, Canada. Canada is 11. All right. Enjoy your day further. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good night and good day.